Soon after the Second World War, a young British fighter pilot, Anthony Fisher, became concerned at the direction the country was heading in after the election of a socialist government. He felt that all the freedoms he and his generation had fought for in the war were being undermined. So he went to see the most prominent academic advocate for freedom at that time, the writer Friedrich Hayek, who was based at the London School of Economics. Fisher told Hayek that he wanted to get involved in the fight for freedom and run for parliament. Did he have any advice? Hayek's advice was very direct. Don't do it. He said, you won't change very much if you just go into politics. First, you have to change the climate of ideas. So Anthony Fisher went away, started a business, made some money, and then did exactly what Hayek recommended. He founded a think tank, the Institute of Economic Affairs in London. It went on to become one of the most influential organizations of the 20th century. A young politician, Margaret Thatcher, was a regular at its events. She devoured its publications. In many ways, Anthony Fisher's Institute of Economic Affairs was the birthplace of the free market revolution that swept the world, led by Thatcher and, of course, President Reagan. A few years later, Anthony Fisher started a free market think tank here in America, the Manhattan Institute. To this day, the Manhattan Institute is a vital voice in our policy debates, a home for such influential writers as Heather MacDonald and Christopher Rufo, who's done such incredible work exposing the evils of critical race theory. Why am I telling you all this? Because Anthony Fisher had a daughter who you could say had an even more remarkable impact on the world. Her name was Linda Whetstone. She's my mother-in-law. And this week she died, suddenly and unexpectedly. Linda came from a background where the conventional thing to do would have been to throw herself into life as a mother, the life of the local community in the English countryside, where she moved with her family, and she did all those things. But she did something else. She decided to build on what her father had achieved. And over the course of the last few decades, she herself became one of the greatest and most indefatigable champions for liberty in the world. That's because she focused on the places in the world where people need freedom the most. Through the Atlas Network across Africa, Asia, and Eastern Europe, she helped people start movements and organizations to fight for freedom and opportunity. Property rights, the rule of law, the institutions of a free society and a market economy. As she taught me, these are the foundations of our wealth and opportunity. We take them for granted, but many countries just don't have them. Linda Whetstone set about changing that. She inspired so many people in so many places. She was working in Afghanistan to help build, build freedom and prosperity, and especially to empower women to do it. She was organizing seminars on the rule of law in Zimbabwe to challenge the dictator, Robert Mugabe. She set up the Islam and Liberty Network to teach Muslims around the world how their religion could be compatible with freedom. One of the first projects I remember her working on, relentlessly putting together all the great writings on liberty and free markets, Adam Smith, the Federalist Papers, Milton Friedman, she put them together on a CD, sending it, often smuggling it, into places like Iran and Pakistan. Since she died just a few days ago, the messages from the people she inspired and those she helped directly, most of them young, many from the poorest countries in the world, people of every race and background, They've been completely overwhelming. Linda Whetstone was extraordinary, unique. A woman from the most conventional English background who ended up running the Mont Pelerin Society, probably the world's most revered and respected intellectual institution for liberty. She was a true force of nature, an irrepressible enthusiast. Whatever she experienced was the best thing ever. Whoever she met, she found something about them that made them the most brilliant person ever. And alongside all this, she was the most fun and loving grandmother. There's nothing she enjoyed more than making a bonfire with the grandchildren on a winter afternoon. My sons won't get to do that with her this Christmas. But they're so lucky to have known her. And we're all so lucky that there are people like Linda Whetstone in the world. People who don't care about the fame or the glory. They just want to help people to solve problems, to make the world a better place, and then just Get on and do it, as Linda would say. That's who really changes the world. This country is full of them. You can find them in every community. That's actually why liberty matters, why it works. Because all around us, there are great people who can do great things if they just have the freedom. Linda Whetstone's father 
Anthony Fisher, who did so much himself to change the world, died in 1988. His daughter, my mother-in-law, one of the things that mattered most to her was the thought that he would be proud of what she did. Well, he certainly would be. We all are. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.